I'm back for one final segment with Bahram Adari, the host of Sufism, Essence of Islam. You were telling me that uh, you came out of Iran in the late 70s. Iran is a hotbed of, of political activity right now and, and its understanding of its growing uh, autonomy at one level and, and it's kind of flexing its muscles. What do you think, I mean, as a person who has obviously grew up there, what do you think the response should be of the West to the, the desire to arm themselves nuclear? I think the West uh, should go the way of peace and reconciliation, bring it onto the negotiation table, and by doing so, uh, persuade them to go the right direction. Because we have a great democracy in Western world. I'm happy to live in Canada, such a beautiful country. I always tell my friend, uh, my friends, that Canada is a Urshalim or is a holy land because here people can develop their potential. We all live together from different cultures, so we could. Those countries, uh, such as Iran and other countries, they can learn a lot from uh, democracy that we have in West. But I mean, what yeah. do you do with a, a you know prime minister, a president who says, "I want to wipe you know Israel off the face of the map"? How do you how do you reconcile peace with a, with someone who's that adamant? Well, I mean, from Sufi point of view, the, you know, you, we're not at war. Me, I mean, Sufis are mm -hmm. not at war with anybody, and you can only project peace. And I think it's the duty of every Muslim to be peaceful, uh, to value Western world and uh, Northern America, to have respect for the chance that they have given to us to live here. So I think uh, Islam understand, reaches, salam means peace. You reach with your right hand to shake hand, somebody's hand. I think Islam is about this, and every Muslim, whether he is the president of Iran or whoever, they must, they must go the route of peace. But why, and, why such animosity? What do you think that's about? I, you know, I, I really, I'm not politic. I don't understand politics because, and we as Sufis, we 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 will not get involved in politics. We pull out a little we bit. We pull out because we condemn every violence, every act of uh, killing or so. As Holy Quran says, if somebody innocent is killed, it's like the whole creation is killed. So, for example, if you kill somebody in Canada, they try you for one percent. If you kill somebody in Islamic thinking, it's like they try you for the killing of the whole humanity. So I don't know. The, hope, hopefully, we should pray that the leaders of the world find a way toward peace you, you mean, and you're, reconciliation. You're talking about peace, and, and it sounds like wow, that would be a wonderful thing. And yet, how pervasive is Sufism uh, in in, in uh, the Islam? How many? What are the numbers? How many well, people are Sufis? Sufis are Sufis? very small numbers. How many? Uh, because we, I don't know. There is uh, seven, eight different orders in Iran. There is many, many in Canada. We have mm -hmm. at the moment as well. Uh, Sufi, we're not there to persuade people to join us. We're not there to uh, sort of uh, giving money to each other is haram, taking money from somebody. Sufism is about the way of God, about serving the society. Doesn't matter what job you do, like your job or mine, whatever. Do it the best and get rid of your own greed, get rid of your own vanity. But, but, but even if you're getting rid of <clears throat> anger, don't you need to, don't, doesn't Sufism at least say, here's some things we stand against. We stand against violence and it's hatred. Not, yes. So in one sense, you are politically involved in that by standing against something. Well, I mean, for example, we, you know, you have to have, you know, you can't say I'm standing for uh, a duality is not for Sufis. Yeah? We believe that there's one God. Everything that happens is from him. It's our perception and our view that we see something as good and bad. So for us is to ascend duality, as Prophet Muhammad did, as Rumi did, is ascending duality and understand everything that is evolving and going toward Okay, so I send duality. It's a little confusing because I, I, what I hear is you saying is, I really value the ideas of peace and, and of finding interconnections between faiths. Well, because do we understand peace? Every year, men in suit, tie, mm -hmm. educated, they sit around the table, they talk about peace, and every year we have more violence, more wars. So, because everybody talk on their own term of peace. There is a universal peace that we don't understand. Sufism is about this. Universally, what is the meaning of peace? What is the meaning of hungry? What's the meaning of service? Not what my conception is, not because my conception is very limited to my own experience and my own background. Uh, therefore, I'll be very judgmental. So through practicing prayers and uh, hopefully be good to one another, you can raise above, I mean, above it, that. Do you think that uh, there's an obligation 
to stand uh, against certain activities. Would a Sufi, let's say like yourself, say, I have an obligation to help out where there is need, to stand against oppression if I see oppression? Well, I mean, I don't know if I uh, stand against oppression, not in a violent way. I stand okay. against oppression by uh, civil disobedience, maybe, maybe by even stay, uh, stay silence, you can do that, yeah? Mm -hmm. But not by means of violence, because you cannot harm another creature. Anytime you harm somebody, you're harming the whole universe. The whole world has to obviously come to some understanding that we all came from one source by hurting another. Even the one who hurts is already getting hurt. What if you understand, when Moses was knocking on uh, people's door and inviting them to uh, get rid of slavery and everything, mm -hmm. at the same time he was knocking on uh, Pharaoh's door and he was inviting them to inviting him to God too. Mm -hmm. So this invitation is for everybody, not you know, not for just oppressor or oppressed. Yeah. You, you have you have, <coughs> we have one minute left. What are some connections? You talked about uh, connections between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. What are you finding uh, as far as in your experience? What are the deep connections that you have in common there? I see myself as a Christian. I see myself as a Jewish, and I see myself as a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the law of Moses, uh, that means. Uh, everything has to work on the basis of truth and no deception. Uh, the grace of Jesus and the knowledge and the uh, marfat that Prophet Muhammad brought. So these three is the way of Sufi, and it's about uh, I'm not, you know we're talking about be on the way toward of God. So Jesus said, if you had faith, you could do what I do. Mm -hmm. So by me by saying that if you had experienced God the way I did, you could do what mm -hmm. I do. So hopefully we are all on the same wow. direction. Thanks so much for joining us today. There's uh, so much I need to know yet, but I appreciate your coming on the show. Thank you. You're at great. You can watch Mr. Hadari's program, Sufism, Essence of Islam, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. on Omni Television. We'll be right back.